Hello and welcome to the new decade. Even just saying the year 2020 makes me feel like we're somehow living in the future. But as someone who works and thinks a lot about climate change, this idea of living in futuristic times doesn't fill me with joy and expectation. It more fills me with a sense of, oh my God, how have we left it so late? And speaking of late, I know that I'm a bit late with this Happy New Year video but I've been busy celebrating having the time of my life. Genuinely though, I've spent the last few weeks thinking pretty hard about a couple of questions. And the first question is, what the hell just happened? I ended 2018 with the same sense I'd ended every year, that we were all turning away from one of the biggest catastrophes that's ever faced humanity, climate change. But then 2019 happened and suddenly everyone was talking about it, not just talking about it, but taking to the streets to make themselves heard. So what changed? This is a question I genuinely don't have an answer to, or I have many answers to, but I'm not sure which ones are right. Perhaps it's the increase in frequency and severity of certain extreme weather events, which we're now able to link directly to climate change. Or perhaps it's the rise of authoritarian, climate change denying world leaders, which demands a reaction in the opposite direction. Or perhaps young people, having grown up with an understanding of climate change, are now able to communicate it and act on it like none of us before could have. Perhaps it's all of these to some extent, or perhaps it's none of these. I've spoken to a lot of my climate change friends, and we all have different explanations that we're all completely unsure over. So if you know what the right answer is, this is one of those cases where condescendingly telling me that I'm wrong in the comments would actually be really appreciated. Oh, sorry, just one second. Yes? You're wrong. Oh. Thanks. Hello, darkness, my old friend. Whatever the reason, this action shows no sign of stopping anytime soon, but unfortunately, neither do global carbon dioxide emissions, which rose by 1% in 2019. I know 1% doesn't sound like a huge amount. I mean, if someone gave you a 1% tip when you were working as a waiter, you'd be kind of annoyed. You're welcome. Ugh. But for global warming, this 1% is kind of a big deal. Global emissions need to start falling, not rising, if we're gonna stop climate change. And if we're going to limit climate change to our most ambitious targets, emissions need to start falling by about 7% per year. And this leads us to the second question. What will it take to finally turn this around? Even with all this climate action all around the world, we're still plodding along on the same course. There was this idea that once the symptoms of climate change became severe enough, our leaders would have no choice but to act on the crisis, even if it was far too little, far too late. But what we're seeing is even with unprecedented disasters, we're still able to tow the line we have been for decades. We're seeing this even for wealthy countries. I mean, take Australia, where record-breaking drought and heat have contributed to devastating wildfires. Global warming is certainly linked to that record-breaking heat, although it's still not fully understood what role it might be playing in that drought. The fires have caused thousands of people to be displaced, and Australia has recently even deployed its military. I mean, when we've talked about combating climate change, this isn't the kind of combat that we had in mind. It's not just people affected, of course. Hundreds of thousands of animals have been estimated to have been killed by these blazes. Sorry, I've just realized that that stat, which already would be breathtaking enough, is completely wrong. It's actually hundreds of millions of animals that have been estimated to have been killed by these blazes. I mean, how can an ecosystem begin to recover from this? I mean, that's if there's time to recover from it. What if there's another wildfire, anything like this sweeping Australia in coming years? 
But in spite of this devastating disaster, we're still seeing Australian politicians making the same old tired excuses. So what will it take to get them to finally pull their heads out of the scorching hot sand? I mean, if these extreme weather events and all this public action aren't enough, then what is? Do we just need to wait even more? I mean, this really isn't an option, so make sure that wherever you are in the world, your politicians know that action on climate change should be a priority. Because whatever the answers there are to my questions, we need to make sure we find them as quickly as possible. If you've ever wondered whether we've left it too late to act on climate change, then I can't wait to show you the video I've got coming out in the next week or two. But if you can't wait that long, then make sure to become a patron over my Patreon and also help support me make even more videos in the future. Until next time, bye.